If you're writing on the health sciences, you're likely to write an abstract written according to the American Medical Association, or AMA, guidelines, or an abstract closely resembling the AMA guidelines. There is a wide variety of abstract types, but here I'd like to go over the kind that you'll write on original data. First, I'll lay out the basics of AMA abstract formatting, and then I'll give an overview of what is expected in each section. Let's get started. Now, although most abstract guidelines in the health sciences for original data will follow the general blueprint of AMA or APA style abstracts, there can be variation in the titles of different sections in an abstract, the number of sections, the word or character limit, and so on. So always look at the submission guidelines for your abstract before you submit it. Don't assume that AMA abstracts are what's required if those guidelines don't explicitly state that they are. First, the basic format. A structured AMA abstract is generally expected to be up to 350 words. In an article, the statements you make would normally be supported by thorough citation, but an abstract is meant to be a standalone document, so it won't be referring to outside sources. If the reader wants to know the evidence behind your abstract, they should be able to find that in your longer write-up of your paper. It must also be single-spaced, and its section headings must be in bold. Directly after each section heading is a description that fulfills the purpose of the heading, followed by a space, and then the next section heading. Headings generally include importance, objective, design, setting, participants, interventions, main outcomes and measures, results, and conclusions and relevance. I'd like to talk briefly about what each of these sections is expected to do using the article, Effective High Dose Trivalent Versus Standard Dose Quadrivalent Influenza Vaccine on Mortality or Cardiopulmonary Hospitalization in Patients with High-Risk Cardiovascular Disease from the Journal of the American Medical Association, or JAMA, which happens to have several examples for you to peruse. The important section comes first because the reader's first interest is in the significance of your work. Here, you're going to explain why a researcher should care about what you are researching. In this one, the researcher is underlining the importance of reducing incidences of influenza as it is associated with morbidity and mortality, and further stating that the main subject of their study, influenza vaccine dosages, can reduce the risk of influenza illness. You want to be accurate here. Overstatements or understatements of this importance can negatively affect the application of your research. As you can see in this example, there is nothing about the research methods, results, or even what you're going to specifically test. Those are for other sections. Keep in mind that this important section, like each other section, is an opportunity for the reader to click through, scroll down, or turn the page and keep reading on to your article for more information. Thus, each section should be supported and appropriately expanded upon in the fuller presentation of your research project. Also, notice that this important section is relatively short. The reader is trying to get a strong grasp of your research in a small amount of time, so it's important to be succinct, about one to two sentences. Next, we have the objective section. This is where you state what you actually intend to examine. Notice that it starts with to evaluate, because the AMA strongly advises abstract writers to avoid phraseology like, this study will evaluate X, or we seek to determine whether why. Instead, go right into the objective with phrasing like to evaluate X or to determine Y. It's important to be concise. Notice how this is written to other researchers. Several terms are not defined. Abstracts are generally not places where you're going to define terms, as this takes up valuable space that could be better spent getting directly to the point for other researchers. In several abstracts, the next sections the design, setting, and participant sections are combined. In fact, the Journal of the American Medical Association has a policy of combining these three elements, as you see here. First, you'll describe the design of the study, which, in our example, is ideally short and succinct with the words pragmatic, multicenter, double-blind, active comparator, randomized clinical trial. And again, no definition or further clarification is needed on any of these terms as they would be understood by fellow researchers. 
The details of this, de this design would be explicated in the longer form presentation of the research. You're also going to state when the study was completed. And if you're doing an analysis of old data, you're going to want to give the date of your analysis of this data. Next, you're going to have the setting section. Where did you conduct the study? Short and sweet is fine. In our example, it was 157 sites in the US and Canada. Then, the participants. You're going to give any characteristics about the participants that determined their eligibility or relevance, as well as the number of participants, the number of eligible participants who declined participation, and the numbers and characteristics that describe any subcategories of participants that you made for per comparison, and how many participants you followed up with, as well as your selection process. This may seem like quite a bit, but it is meant to be fairly straightforward. You can look at a few examples on the JAMA website to get a better idea of how to describe participants that may be helpful. Next, you have the intervention or exposure section. If you're doing an, an experimental study on the effect of an intervention that was performed during or as part of your study, like a treatment or medication, you'll label this section intervention and have a short description of the intervention. If you're doing an observational study that is built to observe the effect of a previously existent factor of interest, you would label the section exposure and list this relevant exposure. If there is more than one intervention, use interventions as the heading. And if there is more than one exposure, use exposures as the heading. Here you can see that the intervention example shows that participants received vaccines as part of the study. These weren't pre-existing factors. Here, the exposures example lists relevant factors like demographic characteristics that existed prior to the observational study. The next section is the main outcomes and measures section. Notice how the language is fairly straightforward. Composite, cardiopulmonary, and other terms here show that this is meant to be understood by a fairly educated audience. But these aren't more specialized terms. This may be because the AMA guide specifically states that this section is a place to further break down your methodology for a non-specialist audience. Here you'll state how you plan to measure the outcome of the study, your, your methodology, and try to be thorough and clear. For the results section, the AMA encourages you to include your most significant results as straightforwardly and clearly as possible. This part is often going to take up more of your 350 words than other sections. Being straightforward and clear means being clear about the sample you analyze for your results, absolute numbers for quantitative values, not just p-values that estimate deviation from hypotheses, measures of statistical certainty were relevant, any adverse effects, response rates, and other relevant information. Try to be succinct and thorough, but clear. Remember, not everyone is going to read through to the article, but interested researchers are fairly likely to remember what's in your results section here, whether they click through or not. So it's important to be clear and accurate. Finally, you're going to include your conclusion and relevance section. In our example, the first sentence stating that high dose trivalent and standard dose quadrivalent vaccines did not seem to decrease hospitalizations squarely characterizes the results. It's very important here not to go beyond the results of your research and to make sure that all the evidence for and against your hypothesis is given equal merit. Also, make sure that you don't overstate your conclusion. Phrases like may be and is likely are okay to include if your results don't give you, as they rarely will, 100% certainty. After that, you'll have a statement that discusses the further implications for your research in light of your conclusion. Often this statement has to do with the clinical application or need for further research related to your conclusion. Those are the basics of writing an AMA research abstract. My name is Dr. Peter Mosley, thanks for watching. You can also connect to more resources by visiting the library or the Center for Academic Performance Writing website. For more information, check out our full series on scientific writing, poster design, professional presenter.